Like no matter what uh, purpose of the prototype is, game design comes first, always. And this is something that I will also explain why and how. But overall, workaholic, big mother, um, fourteen-year-old daughter into robotics. I'm trying to get her into games, dev stuff. But let's see. And um, but yeah, so that's something that I wanted to uh, talk about today. But first of all, why do we play games? Why do people play games? Like that's one of the first things that we always as designers come and ask, like, why the fuck are we doing this? And there are many reasons why people play games, especially on different platforms, different genres, different everything, and cross of all of these. Uh, so, but main thing really is the players. It's always player centric. And we don't make games for ourselves. And if we do, then the, we are not professional designers, let's be honest. So how many of you, first of all, have made games that you actually, actually would play as a, as a person. Nowadays I do, but otherwise in the past not. And one thing besides, like, uh, uh, especially I have been for over five years in mobile, so mobile development taught me a lot of this sort of fast, fast treatment now. And nobody knows to fail better than the mobile games. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best I know. Right? So this is something that really you learn so much from it. And but at the end of the day, it's about players, and that's really what we always need to remember, especially when we are prototyping. Because again, what's fun for me and fun? What's fun? So what's fun for me? What's fun for you? What's fun for all of us here at this very moment, especially at the last talk of the day? Like it's completely different. So always user centric. So when you are doing the prototypes, first of all, what, what I do uh, and my team, we prototype a lot throughout the process. So it's not just in the beginning. You keep fucking prototyping every single feature you have to test before it actually goes. Because we do nowadays PC games, PC console. So therefore, and I'm still utilizing mobile development fast things. So this is how we have three PC titles of our own in a team of 25, while well, still we do B2B side. Possible. So again, utilizing all this knowledge from elsewhere, and this is how we do it. But players first. And again, when it comes to prototyping, first of all, how many coders in the house? 
I love you guys. I'm so sorry. I'm going to say a few things now that <laughs> I really love you. There is nothing without coders, of course. But if you can prototype without coders, please do. Yes. Yes. Ooh, yes. So I'm sorry to say this, but the thing is, for example, as a concept artist, and also our lead designer, besides me, I mean, this sort of like a, a narrative designer, especially because we also mostly, I always focus on narrative driven experience. I don't care. Even if client work, we don't have a story, I will make a story for you. Gratis. Just please have a story. So the thing is that we always insist on that. And I would do a lot of, especially game jabs, in, are one of the things that we do internally also when we are testing different stuff. And this is not just from the game jamming culture overall, which is very big in Finland, of course, uh, but this is something that we have been always doing even for, again, client work on our own. So this is not something that we involve client with. We do it uh, because it's really important. But it takes a village to make a game. And the thing is, also, it's really good to prototype with extra few eyes there who are just to, to bounce. Like, for example, the lead designer and me, we are each other's rubber duckies most of the time. Because, and I say that, like, because now you're going to be quiet, I'm just going <laughs> to rubber duck you. Uh, because I need to also hear what I'm saying or what are things going another way around. I'm totally fine with your rubber duckies. So it works really well. But yeah, if you can prototype stuff, especially faster, with the actual design in mind, without coders already thinking about how something will be overcomplicating, the, no, we are not very far from that. <laughs> we are not even scratching that. So try to do it really raw. And by the way, if the game design is good, and this is why we have good games that can be so easily implemented on board games and other way around, if game design is good, you can test it even without aligning code. And I put my career in that. So test as soon as you can by yourself or with the, with the people around. And this is also what in Turku we have a small community. So we also with other game devs, which are quite old in this, like, and what are we to, to be like, we have no fear of sharing and whatnot. So basically come and play, let's try it out. And, and this really helped a lot. But one first and most important thing, why should player care about your game, whatever you're making? Even if you're making a game that you like, that you are making for like, oh, this is my dream project, I want to do it. Still, you still want players, other people to play, so why should they care? So start always with that. One thing about classical art that I just want to uh, explain. So my master's was in classical Roman painting techniques. So it's graffito, fresco, mosaic, wall, church art kind of things, including in classical, but also contemporary. So, but for sake of simplicity, imagine all the church art, right? So all of that is done directly on an actual concrete while drying. It's dry, that's done. You can't do it anymore. And then it stays there for millennia. So that means lots of sketching, lots of planning, measuring 10 times, then cutting. <laughs> so basically, this type of process taught me so much when it comes to leadership, when it comes to design, when it comes to everything else that we do. Because I have to already know every single plan B, C, D, if any other, anything, because now it's there, and I have to be ready for everything that falls apart as I do stuff. Because life happens, we all know how everything goes wrong. Um, and how to do it, especially for the young, how many young, not yet that much experienced designers in the house? Few, great. Please do game jams. So for the old farts here, you already know this. But for, for, for the youngsters, please do it. Because the thing is that you really need to try new things. And there is no better way, outside even company, I mean, they enjoy looking at you, very good, you such. Do this. Do experiment. Get yourself out of the comfort zone. Because that's where you will actually learn how to combine uncombinable things. Because that's our job as designers. We are solving these things. That's why I personally enjoy so much that I would do uh, gamification stuff because if something's so boring and horrible, I oh, it's a challenge. I want to make it sexy, you know, so let's do it. Um, so this is something that game jams are really good. And then put yourself smaller goals. Please do that. Start small. And even if you have a big giant, cut it in pieces. <laughs> then, then handle one piece at a time. And don't compare yourself to others. Ever. I know it's hard. And especially social media. It's super hard, but please do it. There's lots of material out there. And again, 
communities like this are exactly what, what we're all about. <laughs> and no matter how many years in the industry you are, it's not getting any easier. It's the same shit all over again. But this time, you might sound hit kind of <laughs> because you know how to dance now with the monster, so you might hit, but you're still gonna get hit sooner or later. So this is also one of the things to remember. But overall, player is the creator of the fantasy. We provide the building blocks. Never forget that. And prototype every single little thing separately of even the game. So make sure that you can do it as you develop the game, not just in the beginning. Listen to yourself, listen to others, to your players. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use everything possible from the tools there. Especially, as I said, you don't need coders for it even. Um, <laughs> and don't seek, seek perfection, there's none. Use your experience and gut and use your knowledge. Transfer it to, to the project, to the things you really are passionate and love to do. And that's all for me. Cool. Thank you.